Hello, welcome to the Loney Show. I'm your host, John Mayalone. In this episode, I've brought some regular Eric Taylor, who will join us eventually. As for our guest, she's from Kansas City, Missouri. She's an educator and author. Well, what kind of educating, you may ask? Well, we're about to find out, because ladies and gentlemen, I give you Betty Parker Blackman. Hi, how are you doing? Going great. How great. are life? I'm thriving. I tell people I don't like to do that surviving. I'm thriving. And I had to figure that out. That's great. Uh, Have you been up too much recently? Have I been what? Have you been up too much recently? Yeah, I think I'm up to much. Uh, One thing, I reset myself a few years ago when the pandemic started. And I started working on a, a book. Um, because I discovered there were so many people being forced onto online and didn't have enough information so they could thrive, so they could really do well in this alternative medium. Okay. So uh, tell me about what you do. Uh, I am an associate professor of social work. And I've been teaching a long time. And uh, yeah, so I teach at a university. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've been doing for over 20 years. Wow, incredible. Yep. So great. So, uh, Eric, uh, is there anything you want to ask Betty? Uh, <clears throat> Eric says, let uh, me think about this. <laughs> yeah pretty much sorry i just i just i just woke up and you know if i and my if my voice sounds weird it's probably because like you know my allergies are acting up yeah this is happen. that allergy time yeah my throat yeah my throat was hurting last night and weirdly i met i meditated that it just felt better okay meditating always helps mm-hmm like no, I just start. I just started to. I just started to. Oh, recently. Yeah, recently, like yeah. maybe a week ago. Yeah, uh, before you came on board, he was asking me about what I do, and I tell people I'm an educator, and over time I used to do consulting work with organizations around the country, helping them develop their boards, their staff. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to change over. And I was asked, do I want to apply for a teaching position uh, at this university? And I said, no. (laughs) And then I was asked a couple more times and I said, yes. Uh, I don't know why (laughs) I was reluctant, but I was. But after, I, I think I discovered the the joy that comes from exploring, researching, and figuring out how to take concepts that are sometimes complicated and difficult, but make them attractive to other people. So I enjoy that about uh, education. Hmm. It's It's a positive thing that you can do. And most people think of education as lecturing and that I think stuffy view about what educators do. But I think we also take our times and uh, we we help students figure out where they're going. Where they're going with their lives, with their careers. And so it's a journey that it's not all learning don't come from the front of the room. And sometimes we think that's the case. And I don't believe that. I believe you bring with you life experiences that help shape your ability to take in new information. Great. Fabulous. Yeah, great. Uh, so have you ever wanted to do, like, was there ever a point in your life where you where you wanted to do something else other than teaching? Hmm, not really. I think what happened, I started out doing, um, oh, working in nonprofits, 
helping people who are marginalized or not enjoying their best life. So I did that for uh, in combination with teaching because I was part-time teaching, but working as an executive director over the years and uh, running programs. And really, I always saw teaching as a part of everything I did. And at one point I went to a uh, law school but it wasn't to practice law. They had a special program that they wanted people to um, represent people who had been, um, um, they had, were mentally ill and people sometimes would take over their lives. So they wanted somebody to represent that group of people. And then that program didn't happen. I tried law school, but I have to tell you guys, I don't have the patience to be in the courtroom. Now I can do side things, but I don't have the patience for someone to, mm, judges during my time, now this is a long time ago, they did not respect women. So that was difficult for me to act passive. So I made a decision I'd do something else. So I've tried a lot of different things. Okay, great. Yeah, great. So uh, yes. I've heard you're an author. So what books have you written recently? Okay, uh, part of my work when you get in order to be in academia, you have to write and you have to get published. And the things that I like to write about, initially there wasn't a call for that. So... I figured out technology was something at that time, back in the 80s, it was new to people to incorporate into your online courses. So I started figuring out about online. And as a result, that became my trade. Uh, I really enjoyed teaching online. So as a result, when the pandemic came, you had people being forced, universities shut down and said, if you want to come here, you have to go online. And I don't think they were prepared for it. And so they still put up what I call remote crisis, remote learning projects. But uh, I found out a lot of times when that happened, people weren't equipped with the technology or the understanding both ways. So they, there was a call out for authors to participate in a project to write in a monograph. And I responded, but they told me we'll publish, but we want you to take it from a professor standpoint, talk to them, other professors. And I decided I wanted to talk to the students. I wanted to share with them, especially those who were concerned and didn't want to lose money. And I was really pushed when I saw that a lot of marginalized students dropped out, losing their tuition. And so I said, let me write a book about that. So I wrote a book describing some of the tools of the trade, helping them understand how they need to maybe talk to a professor. We assume that students talk to a professor. They don't. In my years of teaching, most of the time they wait till the last minute and it's a handful of people who actually talk and communicate. So I give them some tips for how to do that. And also we assume that people come to class knowing how to write papers, knowing how to write discussion boards, how to cite research, they don't. So I put in some tools so they could understand how to do that and feel successful about it. Okay, interesting. And did you have any other teaching jobs in the past before what you have right now? Yes. I taught okay. at it. Uh, hey, go Jayhawks. They just won the national championship. Uh, I taught there. That's where I started, at the University of Kansas. And so um, 
taught there and did a part-time, you know, teaching there uh, for years until I decided to move from uh, my uh, executive position into a full-time teaching position. I have to confess to you guys, I'm not I wouldn't be good teaching young people, you know, like teenagers and stuff, but I do enjoy working. Uh, most of my teaching has been on the graduate school, people working <laughs> on the degrees. Uh, in that way, you, I feel comfortable and uh, assisting them. Okay, great. Great. So what do you like okay. about what you're doing right now? Okay, I like the research part. I like finding out what's going on, where are the gaps, where are the niches that I can fulfill. And one thing I really like is pursuing accessibility because a lot of times I find um, that online makes higher education more accessible because there are a lot of people who don't have academic degrees don't have their um some people don't have a, a a high school diploma and they now can go online and complete that degree complete higher education so that they can i say i call it thriving that means that they can reach their potential because i think education in this country, it's kind of on the side, people not connecting, that if you're not educated, you'll have a difficult time just living your life, finding your way around, um, critically thinking about, we have elections, our election today. And people, if you don't know how to understand and critically think about what's going on in this country, I think you get lost. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, same here. So, uh, what's as so? What's the weirdest thing that's happened to you? <laughs> the weirdest thing that has happened to me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think now. That's a difficult question about because it depends on what you think is weird. So. I don't remember something really outstanding that makes it weird. Um, but I think sometimes, okay, in my classes, I think it's weird when you have a student who haven't read something and they then try to talk to you about a concept that they don't even know what it is. I think that's weird. Hmm. You okay. don't think that's weird? It's a bit unusual, uh, but it is what I it mean, is. When, when you I define mean, weird, I just don't live a weird life. Oh, okay. Well, Having fair enough. all my years of experiencing, I've experienced things that are distorted, deceptive. I've experienced things that are not as funny as what people may think they are. But I think I've lived a life where I've learned how to live above and beyond the circumstances that I was born into. And feeling that, hey, it is what it is. You do your best. You are resilient. And you never stay down. You learn how to get up and continue. Uh, moving i was about to tell you guys and continue dancing when you fall down but uh but that's that's a part of living life and i feel like over my lifetime i've learned to live with the ups and downs and take it for what it is but not occupy space from a sad or um feeling that I can't do what I need to do. And I have to say, I've learned that because coming, being a woman, being female in this space, you have to 
figure out who are you going to be? Are you going to thrive? Or are you going to let someone tell you what that means? How do you mean in that situation? And I just have never done that. Okay. Okay, that's cool. So. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Same here. So throughout your entire career, what have been the high and low points? Hmm. The low points in my career have been in situations and circumstances where you don't have the ability to change situations. Because a lot of times I've seen people that you know they're smart, they're sharp, but they are unable to thrive or do what they need to do. And that that's a low point for me because you want people to be the best that they, I really do. I want people to shine and be the best. The high point for me was, hmm, I think my, not the highest high, but I think a high point for me was when I uh, received my uh, master's degree in social work and being, being one of the five people at the University of Kansas getting that who was a person of color. A higher point was being uh, one of the first people in a hundred years tenured at my university. So that was a high point. That was an accomplishment, being able to do it. When someone says that you can't do something, I like being able to do it and finish. So achieving um, tenure and uh, promotion to an associate professor was a very high point, especially doing it being a first in 100 years. Great. That's a very, that's very good point you made. Yeah, I think it oh, is. Yeah. I think it's it's another way of saying. I heard this uh, talk today where they were saying, "If you fall down, reset your life so that you don't stay down." And I've always I didn't call it resetting, but I always figured no matter what happens, what challenges occur, I need to keep going, expanding how I look at things. And not when I see things, not seeing failure or barriers, insurmountable barriers, but really seeing this is another challenge. This is something that I can assist others in doing. And I think that's what I've always felt like part of your life is service, service to others. And I think that's what I was taught and I learned that doing for others is a great thing to do and to be. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what was the best piece of advice you've given to one of your students? Hmm. Well, I just gave one to one that has graduated. And I said to her, she was setting her goals too low. She was allowing other people to define her. And the worst thing you can do is allow somebody else to define your world. Define your successes. Define what you can do. And that's what I told her. I said she needed to not allow that to happen because she was listening to these voices. So because in uh, social work, we have to be licensed and you have to take tests in order to do it. And she had taken the test and failed. And so she was kind of just despondent and wanting to give up. So I think that was one of the best. And uh, I start my classes out by saying that you're going to learn in this class how you can be the best at what you do. And knowing and being the best is going to help the clients that you later serve. Because these people will be uh, licensed social workers who will be working with a lot of people. 
And you can't fix somebody or do for somebody if you can't do for yourself. Yeah, that's, that's actually really good advice. Yeah, I think it'll keep you going, especially in an environment where our profession, we see the, the best and the worst. And that you cannot, when you're looking at situations that are bad, you have to be able to not bring that with you and not see how you can work within that. I'm not saying fix everybody, but I'm saying there are ways that you can help people find the best in themselves. And I'm saying some really terrible situations occur uh, in my lifetime and career. Uh, so you have to help people see the best in themselves. And that's hard. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So are, are you a cat person or a dog person? Neither. Really? <laughs> I had a dog when I was a kid. But nope. I know I'm not a cat person. I had cats okay. when I was growing on, but they want to scratch you. Okay. Okay. But that was our wonderful Fluffy. Oh yeah, sure was. Yeah. And so, but no, I'm not a really. I have a friend. She was saying she wants to get a dog. She did get a dog, but I didn't want a dog at this time, because that's a lot of care. You know, with animals, you have to be prepared to be there for them, care for them, and mm -hmm. make a commitment to them. And oh, yeah. I just wasn't ready to do that, guys. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, Which so, Sorry, go, go on. No, I was going to ask you guys what, whether you're cat or dog people. Um, I'm, I'm kind of both, actually. I'm both a cat and a dog person. Do you have a cat and a dog? Well, me and my sister always wanted to have a pet in general, but my parents says, no, it's too much care and we'll end up taking care of them ourselves. Like, all right, yes, I get it. But we, we promised we'll take care of them. And in the end, we didn't. We actually didn't. I find that, that they're hard. It's hard. Oh, yes, it sure is. It's hard. And I think parents, our parents recognize that, that we had cats and dogs, but I didn't have to take care of them because I decided I didn't want to. That's cool. Which recent news story have you found most interesting? Hmm. I, the one where, what's her name? K K Jackson, is it Katanji? Jackson, the woman who is up for being a Supreme Court judge, I found that interesting because I listen, and I usually don't listen to a lot of that, but I listen because it's fascinating for me to have people questioning or doing things like that, and they're not logical. And I was listening to some of the senators and it was fascinating for me just to try to follow their train of thought. And sometimes they lost it, but that was fascinating for me. I, I get fascinating with how people use words or how they redefine words and arrange them. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm a nerd, but I really like listening to how people use their words. Okay. That's cool. I respect that. I respect that. Do you so, have a... Go ahead. Sorry, I was no, about you, to ask you, do you have an accent? Yes, I do have an accent. And it's from? Uh, Manchester. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, Eric... Uh, huh? Go ahead. No, no, sorry. C continue with your question. No, that's okay. I was going to ask Eric... What was his accent? I'm not sure. Is, is he still in? I don't Eric? know. I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't think he's responding, but I, I think Eric is from New York. Okay. I, I, forgot, I forgot which borough it was, but yeah, he's, he's certainly from New York City, but yeah. Okay. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. How long have you guys been doing the show? Um, uh, I started doing this podcast since uh, 5th of January. So it's been over, over two months now, actually, doing this podcast. Do you like it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, because you know what? I just met some people doing it, and they only do positive podcasts. Everything yeah. is positive on it. Mm-hmm. I think that's different. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I, I went to some classes about doing podcasts, but I haven't convinced myself I want to do it because it's hard and complicated. Yeah, yeah, it, it can is. be like that. Yeah, because you got to meet different people and who they are, what they are. But a part of what, when I said about liking words, and I do like meeting people, and I think podcasts, one of the reasons I wanted to do a podcast is I thought that would be something to help students in class and to really push some ideas and tips for them to succeed um, after, you know, along with the book. Because I don't think people really realize that how many people lose money, how many people are not able to go to school. And I really feel sorry for the parents who are working with children online and not always having the assistance they should with online courses you know it's it's difficult to do that and so i thought about having a podcast that would have a series of people coming on talking about the different types of podcasts and the different activities you could do within podcasts um i thought about that but eric i have to say eric's not there okay but oh wait no i'm here Oh, okay. Oh, but, good. Yeah, yeah, you uh, are. It's fine. It just keeps cut. It just keeps cutting on and off. That's why. Yeah, it's cool. And I, it, ha- it happens. Yeah, and I'm yeah. unable to like hear hear anything, so I have to restart it and all. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That that explains why you didn't respond like earlier, because well, we didn't oh, hear. You. Well, well, so, sorry. What did you What did you um say? I, uh, yeah, I didn't really uh, hear you. Well, Betsy was asking me a question about where our accents are from. I said I was from Manchester, and I said that you were from New York City. That was, oh, that was yeah. I'm, I was... Yeah, I'm from uh, Long Island City, New York. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But, but I was just <laughs> going back to that that kind of uh, the podcast, the fact that you are doing the podcast, I think that is a good use of talent. I also think that podcasts are an alternative, another way of presenting information and that it it's found its place in our environment. And I think it's good that we do that. I've studied about people doing it, but because I wanted to supplement my book and the things that are in there, but uh, I haven't decided to do that yet. And so, but I just think that it's uh, it's another tool that can be utilized. And I'm hoping that I will get the courage to do that because I just, guys, I'm really sincere about working with alternative ways of educating people. And I think good online courses are the way to do that. But I think we've fallen down. There are very few standards around the universities about how to, um, how to develop a successful online course. They're not consistent. Some people think being on Zoom is, uh, is an online course, and it's not. But it's really, we need to think about this is a tool that we can use and how do we use a variety of tools? How do we take podcasts like what you're doing and use those to supplement what we're teaching 
in our classes. So I think it's a wonderful thing that we engage in technology and see how far we can push the limits of doing it. Don't you think? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I was thinking of make, making a podcast of my own, too. Mm. Oh, yes. Can't wait for that one. <laughs> what would be <laughs> your topic? Uh, don't know yet. That's why I haven't made it. Oh. I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking about that. Okay. How long I mean, have you been doing this one? You mean uh, Eric Taylor, oh, the regular? Yeah. Oh, as a oh, as a regular, uh, for a couple of months now. Okay. Yeah, yeah he was. A, the, yeah, he was a regular from the very start. Yeah, I think I was the first guest actually. Oh yes, he was in the first episode, which has the most listens by far. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I I need to learn from you guys. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. How to do it. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but if, if I had a podcast, I don't know. I'd probably do some by myself. Then, you know, the net, the other ones I'd probably have some guests. I don't know. Maybe. You know, my, maybe something. What would maybe maybe something. Topics? What are some weird or out topics that you would do? Ah, <laughs> uh, huh. I'd probably tell. I don't know. I'd probably tell some weird stories that don't go too far. But you know, and if they do go too far, I would substitute them with like you know. I would use my um. I would substitute them with clever wording. Hmm. Pretty much. Okay. Oh yes, that's my kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When you oh, guys yeah. think of doing podcasts or their topics, how do you find your topics? Huh. You know, that's a that's a good question. Usually when I do have guests, I try to bring up questions related to what they do, how their lives go on, and uh I try to get information as much on the on my guests as much as possible and have questions based off that. But if if, if all else it's all been done. Uh, I've used a backup plan, bringing up different various conversation starters like travel, uh, more about their lives, and uh, uh, little other other questions as well that seems kind of interesting in my opinion. Okay. Hmm. Oh. What about challenging and then, things in yeah, oh. what's going on out there in the world? Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had a, if I had a, if I had a, if I had one, I probably would talk about things that interest me, like yeah. things that went on in the world, like you know, uh, that for for instance, that uh, that uh, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock thing. Mm. I think that's I think it's really interesting. Yeah, I think it's interesting and sad. Oh yeah, no, it's oh no, it's it's sad, but you know. Yeah. Because I didn't know Chris Rock was 58 years old. Did you? Uh, I knew he was in his 50s, yes. But I didn't know he was 58. Yeah, I didn't. And I heard this uh, D.L. Hughley saying that imagine a 58 or 59-year-old guy being slapped in public and how difficult that would be for them. And I hadn't thought about that, but that would be a good topic to to being slapped. But you know what? Why? What would be a good topic? What did Jada think? It was her head, you know. Uh, I don't think Jada. I don't think Jada liked the joke. I mean, because it's like we kind we kind of got a glimpse of her uh, face when Chris Rock said the joke, and then I, I mean, guess she told her look, eyes. And, Oh yeah, she did roll her eyes, and I'm pre and Will Smith. Will Smith actually did laugh at the joke. Yes, and he did. I, <laughs> then he just went up on stage, and you know, just slapped him. Like I have to defend my wife's honor, even and though she was getting um. <clears throat> how do I put this in a clean version? Hmm. Oh, that would be interesting. Use your words. Let me hear you. Hey, look, use your words. Use some creative words. Hmm. Even though she was getting, um, <clears throat> uh, 
consensually was ha- wait no even though even though she was having consensual intercourse with another man oh no oh yeah nah. um <laughs> okay so that? Link it back for me what happened I'm trying to figure out what does that how does that connect to the oh oh with a younger with a younger um guy okay too. oh yeah Oh, so pretty much um, people are getting at Will Smith because, well, I mean, he defended his wife, but his wife, well, cheated on him. Like, they said that they had, people were, they, they said that they had an open relationship, but, like, I'm pretty, people think that, like, you know, they're lying about that, and I can kind of see why they think they're lying about it. They say they have an open relationship, but, like, other people say that, like, you know, Jada just, Jada uh, got a... Her uh, <clears throat> back blown out by a younger dude. So that negates Chris Rock saying about her bald head. Yeah, uh. I guess I, I don't know. I don't know. It's like people talking about people destroying you on the internet. Um, about that is nothing. But uh, that Joe crossed the line. <laughs> that Joe crossed the line. It. It wasn't even that bad of a. It, there's thing. It wasn't even that bad of a joke. I can see it was. It was just accurate, it, in a way. It, it was. It, it was mild. I didn't no, not even mild. That, that you know why I don't really. She used to wear her hair cut ball before. So how yeah. do you know it's alopecia versus you just wearing your hair ball? I wear mine ball. Okay. <laughs> and my <laughs> friends, they'll see me some days, and they'll. You know, oh, you got your hair done. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but and oh, I mean, wait. I I did it when it wasn't it, nobody else doing it because I first started doing it because a friend of mine, her daughter was in her twenties, had uh, cancer, and she had to shave her head. So I shaved mine too, because people back in the day they were not nice they would say things about girl why are you wearing your hair like that why are you wearing your hair like a man and so uh i don't know because i've done it when i was 18 i let my brother he was a barber i let him cut it and he did it so but with jada i just don't understand the the i i i sympathize with somebody who's losing their hair but if you've done it before, you know what I mean? You, if you've worn a bald head before, I don't see how that was a bad. Because I didn't yeah. know she had alopecia. I really uh, didn't. I think she just takes herself a little too seriously. Like, for instance, if that was me, I'd, I'd probably just I'd, I'd, I'd laugh, I'd laugh it off because it's like, I don't know. I laugh at myself all the time. Well, I think it's it's like... How do you do that? And I like the fact that Chris Rock, everybody knows he makes jokes and things about people, two people. And yeah, that's, his, that's his job. <laughs> yeah. So why would you, and you're sitting there and with her, why would she care being talking about G.I. Joe or G.I. Jane? You know, oh, I, yeah. just, I just thought that was overrated. And I thought it was really bad to hit a person yeah because you don't like what they say i mean yeah i think he made a gi jane joke i think it was related to the movie gi jane yeah actually actually, yeah it was yeah Yeah. but i don't see that as bad i i i i told i told like everyone i know like chris rock could have went harder on her that was the softest joke I've ever heard. Like he, he could have went up, he could have went in on her. He could have annihilated her. And <laughs> you know, he, he could have he could have toasted her rear end, but he didn't. Whoa. Nah. I don't think that's him. I don't know him, you know, because all I do is see him on TV. But I just know there are boundaries and even if he crossed the boundary, that does not justify someone hitting you. And yeah, yeah, yeah I just 
you know, over my lifetime, I've been called a few names and I've never hit anyone, you know, about it. And can you imagine if that, I don't know, I, I like you, I, I don't think I would have been insulted. Or if mm -hmm. I would have been, I wouldn't shown you. I try not to let you see me sweat. <laughs> so, uh, no, I yeah. would not do that. Well, guys, yeah. I think yeah. one of the things about, I do want to say, I hope your listeners think about, uh, if, hey, find the book to support an old lady <laughs> and, uh, helping some younger person who can't afford to buy a book on how to survive online. Because I believe if you, five years from now, online is gonna be main where all the time and people are gonna have to take online courses. And I think that may be sad, but I think that's gonna be the way uh, education is gonna be delivered. I just hope that they take from you, Eric, some creativity when they do it, because I think it lacks creativity. Yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> that is all we have for this episode. It was great having you here, Betty, talking about your life as an educator, works as an author, and especially the discussion right now about Chris Rock and Will Smith. And yeah, it's been quite a ride. Yeah, it is. I just... <laughs> Don't know what to do when people feel it's okay. We're living in a world, guys, that th th they think it's okay to insult people, to to be mean, to be cruel. Um, I I find that difficult when people uh, like you were asking me when I watched that hearing for that Supreme Court. Those guys called her a lie. Now yeah. I would be insulted about somebody calling me a lie. But we live in that world where gotcha. we feel it's okay to demean, degrade in the name of free speech. I don't, I don't yeah. find that the case. But yeah, I, 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 I don't get, yeah, I don't get it either. I thought, like you know, we would prosper, like you know, as people. But uh, to an extent, we are. But to the highest extent, we're not. There's right. progress to be made. Huh? There's progress to be made. Yeah, there's a, a lot of progress that still needs to be made. And people oh. aren't willing to change and people aren't willing to make that progress. Oh yes. I think you can make the thing, but how do you then get people to hear another opinion? To be willing to um, listen to your podcast to say, Oh, these guys are presenting something, uh, opening up us to other people who may have different ideas. Mm -hmm. I think we're close. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be as closed off. I really do. I thought we were really progressing over the years that we are willing to at least hear somebody who disagrees with us. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. We have, we have a friend who talks over people a lot. <laughs> well, anyway, with that being said, until next time, stay tuned for more.